So tall and fall drill is simply something very simple like this. Here it is. Okay, very simple. Tall and fall is you stand here tall and then you just start falling and then you swing. And you bring the momentum, you bring the momentum of your bat with you, bring it until it's time to swing, okay? You don't separate and then swing. It's not two pieces, it's not two pieces. It's not back and then swing. Now, if I'm not moving at all, if I'm doing a drill, I may need to go back with my hands just to get them, just to take out some slack and to get some rhythm. But in this drill, the rhythm that I'm getting is the fall. So the fall begins the inertia, starts the inertia. That's all the inertia I need. Tall and fall. So, and that's what players do in the timing phase. They, they ride on their backside going forward. That's all the inertia you need. So that's really all the hand movement you need to, you need to do you can do it while you're going forward. Okay, that's why you go forward only. Good hitters during their timing phase, they might, like Sammy Sosa, he, he begins out with a wide, wide stance like this. He started like this, and then he went to here, and then he hit, okay? Well, the point is, is when he did this from here to here, somebody else might have went like, like, like this. You may as well be in the same time because it's not during the timing phase, okay? During his timing phase, Sammy Sosa would stand there and go from here, and then he'd go to here, and the guy pitcher would be, okay, assholes and elbows, release, 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 just a highlight kick, release, all right? When that pitcher releases the ball, you're going, okay? And you get ready, release. All right, so tall and fall is to learn how to use your inertia and swing. But you don't want to be looking forward because you don't want to be feeling this. That's weak. So whenever you get the opportunity to practice looking sideways, trust me on this. You guys are so used to looking forward. I'll sit there and I'll tell somebody to look sideways and take a swing and he'll go. You know what? Most guys, when they're looking at a tee, They'll literally do this. The ball is right there. Literally, the ball's there. And they'll go. They'll stand here like this. Well, do you want to hit it like that? Of course not. So if the ball is there, I want to look there. That's where the ball is. Okay? Now, how does that apply? What does that mean? And what does that apply to the tall and fall drill? Well, here's, let me just first show you the tall and fall drill. Let's get this out of here. Tall and fall drill is very simple. You begin feet together, all right? Hands strong, and you bring your hands with you. Hands back just means hands behind you connect it. Hands behind you connect it, or where, wherever they're, they're comfortable. It's when you begin your fall, which is part of your timing phase, You'll have plenty of time to move your hands and it, either to raise your hands and bring your elbow through or whatever you got to do. When you hit a fungo, do you go back first? When you hit a fungo, do you go back and then throw it up? No. You just throw it up and go forward all in one. Throw it up and go. You have all the time in the world to move your arms in, in, in position. You don't have to go back to, to be able to move your hands in a position. As a matter of fact, that just adds extra extra motion, so forward only. So a tall and fall drill, it will teach you how to bring your inertia with you. Now, to bring your, to, to have your hands back means hands are, when you land, you're still in torque. You still have all your energy with you. If I were to land and, and my hands came forward, well, I, my hands aren't back. That would be considered not having hands back. So, Tall and fall drill is simply something very simple like this. Here it is. Okay, very simple.